All right, guys, today we are back with more reviews of optics. You guys seem to like them, and this is one that I was gonna make regardless to who all liked it, but I figured, or who all was liking these videos, but I figured it was really worth um, making a video talking about the EOTech E-Flex, or whatever you wanna call this thing. And I think it's worth it almost to put this out more as a kind of PSA than anything else. But today we're gonna be talking about, like I said, the EOTech E-Flex, and this is currently mated to my um, SIG P320, 320 and this is of course the x10 and so the x10 is a 10 millimeter variant of the p320 it's an x line so it has the slightly higher performance trigger whatever that means it just basically is a better trigger lighter pull and a shorter reset so overall as far as the firearm platform goes as far as the p320 x10 i actually really like this firearm platform and i do enjoy the x10 i think the 10 millimeter in this particular handgun platform is very controllable, very nice. And I've done a video talking about the X10, but in that video, I mentioned the E-Flex and I mentioned that I was going to make a video on this godforsaken optic. <laughs> so what do I mean by this being bad? Now, initially when the E-Flex came out, there was a lot of skepticism to it because EOTech on one side is known for making very good, um, holographic sites are known for and I do have um, an EOTech holographic site on one of my ARs and I really enjoy it. I really like it and I think myself like many people that bought the E-Flex, you know, buy an EOTech, a holographic site, enjoy that holographic site and like it and, you know, enjoy, enjoy that and be like, okay, so they finally made a, you know, micro red dot system for things like handguns and then they gravitate towards that because it's an EOTech, right? So it's at least what happened with me and I was like, you know, they make solid products, they make them in the U.S. and I initially was a slightly skeptical to the E-Flex because I've heard a lot of negative things on them. And of course, when they first came out, people were making tons of accusations on them and saying, you know, oh, it's, it's bad. It's uh, radical shifts if you use it. Um, or if it's under high recoil, I should say, the reticle shifts and all kinds of things, right? So people were just making, you know, different random statements about it and people saying that it shut off under recoil. And then people came in and of course, I recently purchased this, a, so it's been out for a few years. Um, and so people were saying that a lot of those issues had been addressed and a lot of the concerns were null and void. And that's where this review kind of comes into play. So first off, I have to say that to their credit, I, I'm not entirely sure how bad the first generation E-Flexes were. I'm not sure if they you know, really fixed anything or if those problems were just kind of um, null and void or whatnot. But I can say that I haven't experienced any of those issues. This thing hasn't um, under recoil shut off on me at all. It hasn't... Um, so it hasn't under recoil shut off on me and it hasn't under like recoil or use shifted point of impact. So nothing essentially bad has happened with this site in its use per se, but there are quite a few things that I think essentially reasons you shouldn't buy this optic at all. So first off, one of the biggest things that I dislike about this optic actually starts on this side. I've done different shorts about this uh, optic before, but you can see that you're um, brightness adjusters right here, your up and down for your brightness levels are not only very open and very exposed, but unfortunately, when you set this firearm down on, say, like a bench, you set it down quite literally on anything, especially if it's loaded, but even if it's not, just the weight of most firearms laying on its side will put enough pressure on these switches and either a long press with the down or the up arrow causes the optic to shut off. So it is very frequent that, once again, if you're shooting at a range and you go to set your firearm down in a way that would be very typical, you would set this down like this, the weight of the handgun would turn the optic off so that when you go to, you know, level the gun and shoot again after reloading, after, you know, a clear um, or something like that, like where you have to go reset your targets or whatever, um, your optic will shut off. So very suboptimal and that brightness up and down switch kind of leads me to the next fatal flaw in the EOTech E-Flex and that is, um, 
it is an incredibly anemic optic. And what I mean by this is that I guess granted in most times where most red dots would shine is in the dark. So maybe it's not as bad. Um, it's definitely not as noticeable in low lit or low light conditions, but this thing only has eight power settings. And what I mean by this is the, like you can only move it up and down or from its like basically lowest point to its top is eight clicks. And most other optics have in the range of 10 to 13 different uh, variants or modes. And so what this leads to is that this thing, by the time it hate, hits that eight power, it is not daylight bright at all. And that's part of the reason why there's actually suppressor height sights on here so that regardless to what happens to the optic, um, the suppressor height sights are still there and I can still definitely use this thing because in any type of just normal um, lighting, even like right now, like unfortunately I can't really particularly show it on camera because this thing is so dim. Um, even right now with this lighting, I can still see the dot. It's still there, but it is very minuscule. It is not a particularly bright dot and uh, that is on its highest brighting, brightest setting. And so very, very low. Let's see if maybe I can pull it off here. I don't think anyone will be able to see it, unfortunately, but yeah, it's just a very, very, very dim optic and it definitely gets worse as the battery gets diminished. It's brighter, of course, when the battery is brand new, but this is something that similar to most EOTEX and kind of leading to the next con, this is a very battery hungry optic. And so be prepared to go through batteries far faster than you would a typical like hollow sun, RMR, um, or even like a Delta point or something like that. This thing is going to chew through batteries far faster than most other um, optics. So yeah, um, definitely a downside to this optic. All right, so let's talk about some of the pros to this thing. Now, I've just listed off a whole bunch of reasons, and ultimately, I will say I would not encourage anyone to buy the eFlex. It is unfortunate because, like I said, EOTech does typically make very solid products. Typically, they're actually pretty expensive, whether you're talking about the Voodoo kind of LPVO line, whether you're talking about their you know holographic optics. Um, they typically make you know pretty expensive and pretty quality optics, but uh, the eFlex is actually one of their more affordable and unfortunately one of their least recommendable, at least by myself, um, really can't recommend them. And so essentially they're just no good, but there are some redeeming qualities to the E-Flex. And the first one of those would be that the glass clarity on these is very crisp. It's very clear. It's definitely one of the most um, crisp optics or glasses that I've looked through when it comes to the micro red dot line. Um, even in comparison to things like the Trigicon RMRs, it has a very clean, very nice glass, and there's basically no distortion, no different differential in light. Um, if you guys know what I mean, like if you look through like a hollow sun, it's not going to like drastically change the color of what you're looking at, but there's a little bit of distortion. Um, this is very crisp, very clear. In addition to that too, the kind of walls to this optic, as you guys can hopefully see here, are pretty thin. And so it allows you to have a very big sight block or a sight picture. So overall, when you do level it, if this was a more functional optic, honestly, um, it would be really nice because you have a very clean glass and a very big uh, sight picture or window for you to see you know, what, what you're trying to shoot at. And so overall, the eFlex has a lot of things going for it and maybe, you know, in the potential near future, if um, these eFlexes improve on their issues, these could be recommendable. But at this current generation and at this time, you know, with as long, with how long the eFlex has been out, I really don't think that they're going to make it any better than it already is. And so at this point, I can't really recommend it because it's unfortunately just not really an optic that I would depend on. You know, it's not something that I would trust my life to. I certainly wouldn't run this as like a primary only, like a red dot only kind of setup. A few people um, run, you know, like handguns, especially as optics only. And I would not encourage doing that with the E-Flex because the E-Flex is just not a well-rounded enough um, optic for you to be able to depend on 
every single time. Now, like I said, in low light situations where it would probably be more advantageous to have a red dot, where you know like using iron sights might be harder the eflex would probably shine in those situations because it's dark out already and it would you know obviously be very bright but in daylight situations it's going to be extremely dim to non-existent so unfortunately that is the downside to the um, eflex and i really wish that the eflex was a better optic for what it is but it is just unfortunately not and it really, like I said, I don't think they're improving it. I don't think they're going to make it better than they have at this point. But I will say, to its credit, it does well under recoil. I think many people would consider something like a 10 millimeter, especially a handgun like this, to have a very jarring recoil to it, um, especially for a you know slide-mounted reflex sight. Um, so something like this is a good representation of the fact that this thing can take a lot of abuse and that it will work very well. Like I said, I haven't noticed any perceptible um, point of aim shifts. So now granted, once again, it's a handgun, so I'm not shooting it at like 50, 100 yards. Um, it's being shot, you know, 25 yards and in. So maybe there has been, but it's been so minuscule that I wouldn't be able to detect it. And overall, um, you know, it's, it's a nice looking optic. It's pretty cool, but yeah, I just, I can't recommend it. Unfortunately, the performance just isn't there. And overall, it's not something that you want to bet your life on and depend on for safety. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully I, my spending of money can help save you money and don't buy the E-Flex. Don't do it guys. It is a trap. But anyways, as always guys, God bless and I'm out.